Let's go! LSU, UCLA, are you kidding me? The game is finally here in the Rose Bowl, and a lot of you are feeling good about a bounce-back year for LSU. This game will go a long way. So, I'm going to need your score predictions down below because... I'm not going to lie, I'm a little nervous about this game for a few reasons. Now, you know, the two biggest people for UCLA are obviously these two people, Chip Kelly and their quarterback, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, but there could be a scenario where both of them could have a bad day and UCLA still end up winning this game, and it's because of these three keys. Number one, if the LSU offensive line comes out and lays a stinker, uh, LSU is going to lose. The season opener last year, LSU's offensive line arguably cost him the game against Mississippi State, and you can make the case for a lot of games last year. So James Craig is out, Brad Davis, Baton Rouge native is in, and his first game is on the road in what potentially could be a hostile environment. Now, once again, crowd noise does play a role into this. How many UCLA fans are actually going to be there compared to LSU fans? Uh, we'll see. Number two is going to be run fitting, our film study from uh, the first day of our LSU UCLA film week. Uh, UCLA can run the football really well. They have a very experienced offensive line. They do get their center back. They have two bruising backs that could also catch the football out of the backfield in Britton Brown and Zach Charbonnet, both of which are really experienced backs. Now, I know a lot of you are excited about the LSU defensive line, and you should be. This could be a very special group, but it's mostly the same guys from last year that allowed three yards before contact per rush, which uh, is a pretty large number. And point number three, we normally like to make this a coaching point. Uh, The third quarters for LSU has been by far the weakest under Ed Orgeron. We did a deep study. Now, I know a lot of you aren't going to watch our 30-minute video on the third quarter. In fact, it was one of our lowest-viewed videos we've ever done. But to me, that was our most important video ever. (laughs) I spent weeks looking at third-quarter data, and it was really troublesome when you look at win probability percentage, when you look at uh, the overall scores of that quarter. For not only 2020, but 2019, the third quarter was by far the worst for LSU. And It was particularly bad away from Tiger Stadium. So it's a true road game. Communication's a little bit different because you're in a stadium that is not a stadium that you're normally familiar with. Now, speaking of new stadiums, while I actually record this video, the LSU team is going through a walkthrough at the Rose Bowl, which I think is very important because UCLA players did slip a lot. And it is interesting because both of these teams have two different equipment companies and two different equipment crews. So uh, obviously cleat management, it's LSU's equipment is just amazing. They, they have so many really talented people in that department. Uh, that's going to be key as well. Still, uh, <laughs> that goes to show you that adjustments are going to need to be made. And LSU, quite frankly, has not really been that great in that department, whether it's mostly defensive adjustments, but also offensive adjustments. When you include early fourth early fourth quarter scores in the third quarter last year, LSU allowed two scores or more in seven out of the ten games. Yeah, they were really, really bad defensively in the third quarter, and they weren't that great offensively either. So now we get to three players, and a lot of people, you know, <laughs> the key players are always going to be your quarterbacks, so we don't normally include them, but obviously Max Johnson is the biggest key, but arguably as big of a key is going to be the guards, okay? So we talked about Austin Deculus and Cam Wire yesterday, Chasen Hines and Anthony Bradford, whoever starts a right guard. And let's be honest, there's a lot of pressure on Ed Ingram. He was either really, really good last year or not so great. There wasn't much in between with them. And uh, he's got a senior bowl invite on the line this year. I, I hope nothing but the best for him. But the offensive guard play for LSU was beyond abysmal. They might as well throw Liam Shanahan in there. Player number two, we're actually going to go to UCLA, Kyle Phillips and Josiah Norwood. Those are going to be the wide receivers that are going to line up a lot in the slot. So that means these are the guys Cordell Flott will be going up against. Can LSU lock down the slot, a position that was really troublesome last year? 
I don't necessarily uh, see a Justin Jefferson like talent for UCLA. I think their receivers are very guardable. And add on to the fact that DTR did not play well uh, last week, I, I would feel pretty good about LSU slot corner in this game. And a lot of it's going to come down to how much safety help are they going to give him. And I understand Cordell Flott had a lot of, of pressure and bad things said about him last year, but. I, I will say this, okay, when watching UCLA's defense, th- this kept becoming more and more clear to me. Slot corner play can be especially hellacious if your defense is easy to read pre-snap. And I, I don't know if I've ever watched a defense so easy to read pre-snap as LSU's. And I think that's a big reason why uh, quarterbacks were able to crush uh, LSU. So uh, point number three, uh, we, we normally, or X factor number three, we normally like to highlight a coach and uh, obviously LSU's got two new coordinators and Jake Peets and Durante Jones. I'm going to go with Jake Peets being the bigger of the two because if LSU's offensive line that does not play well, it's going to severely limit and potentially cause some panic um, in, in that LSU's coach's box. So it's not just Jake Peets, he's going to need DJ Mangus to have a big game as well. Also, uh, as far as Durante Jones is concerned, I think the biggest question he's going to have to answer is, what if DTR really gets going on scrambles? What can you do to prevent that from happening? I do think traditional four-man rushes are a still very valuable thing to have, but in the college game... I think if you don't provide variety and you don't provide layers to your blitzing and your pass rushing, uh, it can open you up for big time scrambles. Okay, and if you want more on what I mean by layers, uh, I, check out our DTR dual threat quarterback piece. So now we get to the score prediction. LSU right now, and I'm saying right now, by the time I'm recording this on a Friday, it, it's down to two and a half at UCLA, and the over under has been floating around 65. Look, uh, there are some external factors that some Sharps are taking into their play this week, and obviously it is the hurricane. Now, this is by far way more important than the game of football. Uh, Hurricane Ida, shout out to all our viewers that have been severely affected, including my own personal family, Uh, the Cliffs, the Leonards, the Johnnies that I know, um, and there's so many of you, Graylin that uh, support my channel. I I understand that this has been a really tough time. Normally when an SEC team plays uh, a non-SEC team or a team that is not a top 15 recruiter, and UCLA um, is is not a top 15 recruiter, okay? They, They don't get the four and five stars. Now, they did get Kenny Young out of the state of Louisiana a few years ago, and he turned out to be a beast, and I'm still kind of sour about that because I loved Kenny Young coming out of high school. But still, UCLA doesn't have the same level of raw recruiting power as LSU does. Normally, that is seen in the trenches, but my concern is the opposite, where UCLA's offensive line is better than LSU's offensive line. Um LSU's defensive line, I think, is better, but I I do think there is cause for concern as far as how UCLA run blocks against them. How are the run fits going to be? It's something that we've stressed all this week. So, you know, it's interesting because normally when you think SEC athletes, you think the trenches, they're way better. I actually think it's the opposite this week. I think the trenches for UCLA, particularly on the offensive line, is actually pretty easy. Even with UCLA having a slight advantage, of course, there in the offensive line. The difference is the skill guys, okay? I think LSU's wide receivers are going to give UCLA's defensive backs a lot of issues, especially if LSU's offensive line's blitz pickup is going to be better. And if that is the case and Max Johnson has time to throw, I think you could see, once again, I know I've been pumping them up all offseason, This is a DeRay Jenkins channel. I think Brian Norwood, who is a very sophisticated passing game coordinator, is going to do the smart thing. He knows Max Johnson locks in the Kayshawn Butte. So he is going to do what? He's going to double Kayshawn, trust his blitzes to get home, and he's going to force Max to find someone else. 
If Max has become a better second and third read quarterback, this can open up huge opportunities for number 10. Um, I think this could be a 100-yard game for Durade right off the start. So I, I think if Max is better in that department, I really like LSU skill position guys lining up against UCLA. And the same thing is true for the other side of the ball. I, I'm not overly impressed with UCLA's wide receivers. I'm not overly impressed with DTR's throwing ability, even though mentally he can do it. Mentally, he can read a defense. Mentally, he's really good under pressure. And mentally, he is really good at uh, not making catastrophic mistakes, throwing the football away when there's danger. I'll give him all of that. But I'm not sure if he can make big-time throws. And if the pass rush can can keep him from running, um, uh, this could be a really fruitful day for LSU's new defense. Do they make the big-time critical adjustments and decisions in tight games? That's another big X factor before making my play. Then we get to the final one. A lot of you saw our top five LSU Tigers piece. And number one player was Cade York. And if you have a point spread at two and a half, um, and LSU's tied late, well, you got to trust Cade York to make that game winning kick, right? Um, we haven't talked much about LSU's punter. We really don't know exactly who that's going to be, whether it's Peyton Todd or uh, Avery Atkins. We hope to see neither of them. Um, when you have Cade York, you, you're pretty money in the clutch. So because of LSU special teams at a slight advantage there, I'm going to go with LSU in this matchup. And uh, the over-under is set at 65. Let's go LSU 31, UCLA 28. Boom! Uh, Once again, shout-out to Mario and Musso. Those guys are great. Make sure you support them. It is. It's game week, baby. Let's go, Tigers. Let's freaking go. Let's go. Let's do this for Louisiana. Let's go, guys. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom. Oh, yeah, we're doing some shrimp pasta tonight. Let's go.